Thanks so much for the opportunity to join you. My name is Dr. Dorian Miller. I'm an Associate Professor of Medicine at the University of Chicago. I'm also the Director of the Center for Community Health and Vitality. Um, my training and background is that I am a general internist. You may say, well, what exactly does that mean? It means that I'm a doctor for adults. And so I practice primary care medicine. I do preventive health as well as treat um, people over the age of 18 up until I actually have a couple of patients that are about 99 or 100 years old um, for health conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, et cetera. I practice at the University of Chicago Medicine, which is located on the south side of Chicago in a community called Hyde Park. Um, if you have the opportunity to look at any of the Chicago area community maps, we're located in area number 41. Um, but however, we, see, we are surrounded by a number of communities that suffer from a lot of issues around health disparities in that um, the health outcomes for the people who live in those communities primarily people who are African-American are worse than um, other communities where there are, there are a majority of, of the white population. And so there's a lot of poverty, um, a lot of uh, chronic illnesses in those communities. And in terms of my connection to community, um, I was born and raised on the South side of Chicago. Um, education at the University of Chicago for medical school and um, have been not lifelong, but a long time Southside resident. The strengths of the community that I serve, and I think that this is not only prior to COVID-19, but actually ongoing, is a real sense of history and a sense of neighborhoods and neighborhood activism. Um, the work that I do through my center, um, actually, we, I work quite a bit with people who represent community-based organizations and people who are interested in strengthening um, the infrastructure of their communities, not just from a health perspective, but also from an educational and also an economic perspective. And so um, I think that the um, community... Um, uh, real solidarity amongst community members is something that I see a lot. So the kind of strengths that have emerged um, in our communities in the face of COVID-19 include community organizing, um, it, particularly for people who are in need of services, whether it be support of testing in communities, uh, also people who have run into issues around food insecurity, um, that there's been organizing around helping people to get uh, the food that they need. Um, because of some of the unrest that's taken place, not around COVID-19, but some of the uprisings that have occurred around the uh, killing of George Floyd, um, people have sometimes had a loss of places where they would normally go for medications or prescriptions. And so there's been a lot of community organizing in order to Get, help people to get the help that they need, particularly older people around medications. One of the issues that comes up around structural inequities and why black and brown people tend to suffer more from COVID-19 include issues around poverty and crowded housing. These kinds of issues existed before COVID-19 was present, but one of the reasons why you see in particular um, rapid spread in these communities is because if you if someone contracts the infection and they are told to try to isolate themselves from other people in their households that and they can't because they don't have any place else to go if you've got five people who are living in a one bedroom apartment with one bathroom it's likely that things will spread the other issue is that for people who are in jobs that are considered essential workers i'm not about healthcare providers, I'm talking about people who drive the bus, people who work at your local uh, grocery store or drugstore. Those types of jobs that tend to be lower wage jobs tend to be held much more by black and brown people, so the African American and Latinx communities. And in that way, they will have a closer connection 
um, it, or I should say more exposure to people who may be asymptomatic. And so they may pick up these infections as a result of their day-to-day -day work, and they can bring those infections home to uh, their loved ones. And so again, it, these are the kinds of structural inequities that we see that are leading to higher rates of COVID-19 infections amongst black and brown people. Uh, the other issue is that the use of public transportation, this certainly came up a lot in the city of New York where hardly anyone drives a car. People usually get to work on either trains or buses. Um, that crowding in people and with people in smaller spaces and transmission in that way, poor ventilation has also led to uh, higher rates of COVID-19 infections. The question of how racism and structural inequities um, impact COVID-19 is something that my parents taught me a long time ago, and I didn't understand it until I started studying this work as an adult and as a, a, a physician. And that is oftentimes when, my, when the white community catches a cold, uh, minority communities will catch pneumonia. And I had a long time, took me to understand the, the difference in severity and why that is. And it oftentimes has to do with many of the things that will contribute towards uh, the structural inequities that will put someone at higher risk for development of, of illness. So think about food deserts in communities and what people have available to eat. Think about um, a lack of opportunity for regular physical activity, perhaps leading to obesity. Combine that with maybe having um, I don't want to call it mal, it actually is malnourishment, meaning bad nourishment as opposed to being undernourished, which is something that people usually think that, oh, if you're malnourished, you've got to be skinny. And actually, no, it means that you are receiving um, bad nutrition and uh, obesity, high blood pressure, diabetes, kidney disease, all of the things that can occur as a consequence of those things. Um, have more to do with those the underlying illnesses that people develop and therefore in the face of COVID-19, unfortunately, making them more susceptible to not just having infection, but complicated infections. Now, some of the policies that one can support in order to, I think, really push the ball towards health equity includes getting involved in your civic space and when I say getting involved in the civic space, um, making sure that if there are community meetings taking place around health and well-being, um, around education, around economic development, to make sure that you have a voice at the table, whether it be your voice in particular or working with um, elected leaders, elected officials in your community to say, hey, I know that we are living in an area where the closest grocery store is two miles away and that there's not direct bus service to get there. What can we do in order to bring more resources to our community? And so I think being engaged in that kind of civic dialogue um, with elected officials, advocacy, um, working for these things on your own, I think are all things that can be really helpful. There are a number of community redevelopment agencies that provide advocacy for services, knowing who they are, knowing how to work with them, and doing that type of civic engagement, I think, is really critical. I'm so glad for, for the students that you're taking this on. Um, public health is a career um, that you may want to consider somewhere down the line, and sometimes public health, people think of public health as being what doctors do when they're in a doctor's office, but actually 85 to 90 percent of good health outcomes have to do with staying healthy in the environment. Things like clean air, clean water, the kinds of things that oftentimes we take for granted until they're gone. And so as you think about what you want to do with your future, think about the role of public health and what it means to you in your health and well-being throughout your life and whether or not you might want to think about it as a career. <laughs>